Hello and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with me, your host, Agostino Zynga. And this is episode number 430. That's 430430. Eh? Mi español es muy malo, pero aquí... How you doing? How you feeling out there? My family, my friends, it's the end of the week. Hope you're doing good. Let's get pumped. Ugh. This is Jackson's Zinger Show on YouTube. If it's your first time tuning into the show, make sure to smash that like, click subscribe, turn on your notification bell, leave me a comment down below. If you listen via the podcast, I have a five-star review, a download and a share, stick it up your asshole and shove it where the sun don't shine. That'll be much appreciated as well. And all things in between. Support via Patreon is always more than welcome as well. Patreon.com for just Agostino. You get exclusives, bonus exclusives, exclusive bonus shows on Patreon for my Patreon subscribers only. Agostino Zinger Show, all access available via Patreon.com for just Agostino. My Patreon subscribers, hold tight. That content is coming at you very soon. We're going to do live streams on this channel. We're doing mixes, right? I've got DJ mixes stacked up that I've recorded. I'm going to get out. So if you're tuned in, you're going to get locked in. If you're locked in, you're going to get tuned in. We're not playing around anymore, man. I know it's a lockdown, but we're not playing around anymore. I'm fed up. Fed up of playing around, man. I'm fed up with these men taking me for a fool, because I'm not one. I might be dumb, but I'm not a fool. Anyway, <laughs> we're back. Hope you are well. Hope you are good, wherever you may be. It's a pleasure to have your company right now. I'm so happy and so grateful that you're here with me. Anyway. So, how's it been going? Good? As you can tell for me, it's been going pretty well. I'm stocked full of a bit of coffee. I've got um, one bottle of Tesco Value water in my belly, which is about two litres. Not too bad. I'm pretty proud of myself. I'm trying to drink at least one of these a day, right? One of these a day keeps the pounds away, but not really. Um, and that's about it, really. You know what I was thinking about today? I, I, I think I really want the gyms to be back open, man. I think I've spoken about this ad nauseum on here. But I really, that's the one thing that I'm dying for. I think, you know, I'm, I'm a I'm a nightlife fiend, as most of you guys are aware. But I could probably do without the clubs until they've come back, they come back. But the gym, man, allow me some avenue, some route that I can kind of take out some of my male um, pent-up energy and aggression out on a barbell, right? In a nondescript uh council gym somewhere surrounded by eastern europeans and various other people from other countries that you have no idea where they are on the world map i would much rather prefer that than where i am now at the moment you know it's not there's, there's something about doing push-ups on carpets that doesn't really doesn't really bang the same you know what i mean it's not the same thing bruv doing crunches at home like this man i just can't do it i can't do it man i can do it um so that is something that i'd be really looking forward to but hey I guess we have to wait. Um, what else did I do? Oh, I started to watch a bit of that Night Stalker documentary on Netflix. Um, a documentary focusing on the life of serial killer Richard Ramirez. The dude who, I guess in the 70s, 80s, I think you'd say, around that time, right? He was creeping into people's windows and, you know, bludgeoning victims to death. He had no MO, actually. He had no um, type. Usually there's like a um, a sort of type they go for, these serial killers, if you watch enough of these documentaries. But he was a bit of a weird one because he's kind of covered the whole breadth, right? From young to old, um, you know, to male to female, different races. It just didn't matter. And obviously it, was, it helped because it was all localized in one area. And it, was, and it was a kind of a set technique that he kind of adopted. But in terms of the victims, that was a difficult part they had to kind of link, right? To kind of they i think they 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 focus on one police officer who they kind of lionize a little bit i'm sure he wasn't as great as everyone makes it seem as but you know it's a documentary there's always a bit of revisionist history in there but um they say in a documentary that he found it really difficult convincing the rest of the police force to believe that this one guy that was responsible for kidnapping this five-year-old was the same guy that bludgeoned to death a 75 year old because it just didn't make any sense why would that you know same person do those two different crimes um but then you know obviously we with evidence over time i think the main thing that kind of broke the case was footprints at the time of a particular shoe that wasn't very popular and you just think about you know you fast forward to nowadays where everyone's wearing sneakers it's going to be a lot difficult to kind of find somebody off those kind of marks but of course the um the likelihood of finding somebody that does a kind of crime like that and nowadays would be made a lot more easier with technology and all those kind of things so he kind of got away with it a little bit more because back then people were a little bit looser with their security at home there was a tendency to leave your windows open um 
you know, people weren't really on watch as they are now, especially with the amount of media that's been created around serial killers and things like that. People are a little bit more on edge and have their head in the swivel. Um, and kind of, you know, unfortunately for the families that were devastated, he took advantage of that. Um, the documentary is quite graphic, to be fair. There's a lot of really graphic um, crime scene photogra phot photographs. I'm assuming they had to get permission from all the families to sign off on it, but it's pretty. it must be pretty bleak to see your member of your family remembered that way right splayed all over all over the floor with you know an artistic x put across their face or something but you can see where all the hammer marks have been you know left on their body and it just i don't know if it was me i'd be a little bit bummed out you know what i mean that my grandma aunt or whatever was being you know shown that way on tv but i guess there is a part of you if you're a family member i guess part of the grieving process says you want people everyone else to kind of acknowledge your pain and what you're kind of going through so i'd imagine they probably don't really care that much in that respect and i think just the pain of not having that person around is would never be equaled by you know any kind of documentary but i recommend you check it out it's really good probably a little bit too stylized for my liking there's a lot more there's you know there's too many purposeful dramatic thrillery type things they love that kind of silent gap in between and then the ring of the of, of the handgun uh what you call it noise and soft sound effect the bus shots effect and stuff but i don't know if you're into that kind of thing check it out again it, it's not really going to tell you much than what you already know if you're if you're kind of clued up on your serial killers which is weird too isn't it to be clued up on your serial killers to have that much knowledge of people who have caused that much misery <laughs> that it becomes a little bit of a hobby to that you can correct people on certain dates and stuff it's like yikes that's odd i guess knowing who serial killers are and knowing their date of births and who they killed and when they were around it's probably as weird as those guys who have extensive knowledge about porn stars and stuff right you met those kind of guys that right? who know the names of all the porn stars who know their real names their backgrounds who follow them follow them follow them through interviews who go and meet them at those kind of adult entertainment um expo things oh that's a big thing isn't it? i wonder in a post-covid world do expos exist i wonder isn't it? Was, i think a lot of people who are following the bodybuilding scene on youtube were saying for a long time that expos were kind of um you know were a little bit tired of a platform to showcase your wares and products and services now i don't know if it's because most of these people were you know fortunate enough to had have business that existed off of you know on the on the internet for the most part i'm not sure if it's kind of you know oh, just because you've kind of sorted out your life um, you don't need expos anymore. Doesn't mean everyone else doesn't need them. But I remember a lot of them complaining that expos don't really work as best as well as they did in the past. So I wonder if in a post-COVID world, if expos become a thing or they don't. I would, I would go probably go with, I'd probably go with the uncommon thinking, because I think all these things that people think aren't gonna survive in the new post-COVID world, I think are gonna come roaring back. Stuff like you know, ferries, um you know um, airlines what they bet against cinemas everywhere that you're meant to be in a closely dense packed area i think are going to come back roaring more so than people actually believe i think people are going to have so much need to be outside of their homes and away from whoever they've been spending the last 18 months with that they're going to be willing to put their lives and their bodies on the line they, they won't care that's my assumption that's my kind of guess estimate I think we're going to see a lot of that. You're going to see a lot of people going on ferry rides that they probably wouldn't have done before, going on cruises, um, going to cinemas, doing that thing. Remember um, when a new X-Men movie will come out, they'll do like a marathon. They'll show you all the other X-Men movies or, or the other Marvel movies or the DC other movies. Or if a um, Harry Potter movie comes in, it'll be like a marathon. Those things will be ram-packed, jammo packed um, art gallery exhibitions and openings. Like, ooh, the first Thursdays and stuff, when they come back, they are going to be jumping they're going to be jumping um so don't be surprised them um, the first carnival back after flipping covid as well jesus it's going to be insane so all those things that people think are going to take long to come back my guess is that they're going to be come back roaring roaring and i will be first in line first in line anyway we've got a jam-packed show for you today loads of stuff to jump on into so if you've got yourself a drink or something to snack on please grab it right now let's dive on deep and get in on all the other topics that we need to speak about before the end of the day so um topic number one 
This is a kind of a funny one, actually. Um, this is courtesy of BBC News. It says, Rita Ora, venue keep venue to keep license after admitting lockdown breach. If you remember at the big, no, I said the beginning. Well, some few, a few weeks ago, Rita Ora was caught celebrating her birthday party in a local restaurant bar where she lives. Um, and, you know, some uh, Snoopy, snitchy, Carlton S, not Carlton, uh, what was his name? Randall, yeah, Randall esque. Um, Tattletail decided to take some very clear iPhone pictures of Rita Ora and her team going into a uh, very dark restaurant. And then we learned later on that they'd kind of sealed up the, the windows and made sure no one could peer inside. And then the story came out that they'd basically paid the manager off that was basically hired there in order for Rita Ora to celebrate her birthday. Because as you've known through lockdown, celebrities just must celebrate their birthday. All exp like, I guess. I guess I can't blame them because if you're a celebrity or a public figure, you're coming to always generate content, right? Content you have to generate in order to kind of keep people engaged, keep people interested because that's eventually, that's essentially paying your bills. You are selling yourself, right? Without you, nothing moves. Cool, safe. So the easiest thing to win it with is like stuff that happens just to you, right? Stuff you don't have to go and do. And one of the things that you can kind of squeeze until the cows come home or squeeze completely dry is your birthday, right? Pregnancies, engagements, breakups, because they're things that are just happening, right? They just come, they kind of organically sprout out from you. But birthdays are unique because they happen every year for as long as you're alive. And even if you're not alive, people keep celebrating your birthday anyway. So it's a, it's an easy win. So I understand the, the need to constantly celebrate your birthday, but it's just interesting for Risa because Risa Ora, if you're not familiar, especially in the UK, she has such a terrible reputation. Every time, again, I'm, I don't follow nothing about her career. I met her once in in person and she was really really nice this was um when i went to new york when i went to new york to the first time i ever went to new york i think it might have been 2017 or something like that oh, 2007 sorry and i went to meet her and preston when you used to have that website her and .com. we hanged out and then i met those girls the couple that did the brand called i think it's silver spoon it was like a leather brand right leather kind of uh, fashion brand that was based from new york um i think there might have been two jewish people i'm not sure what they were but anyway there the, were the a couple like a man and a woman and then they were basically styling uh risa Ora at that time and i think she must have been happened to be in new york i'm gonna say her new york it might not have been london but wherever it was i met her along with those two um and she was very nice very pleasant and again the reason why i say that is because usually in the, especially in london i'm not sure how it's in other places but in london more so the people who are kind of you know you're deemed to be public figures or celebrities are usually quite up their own asses it's not it's not bad but it just is the nature of the beast in it and i guess maybe because we're a smaller island um the, wh whoever is a celebrity in this country you're most likely going to know them it's unlikely you don't know any of these people even if you don't consume their content you're going to be coming across with them so my, that might feed into their ego i don't really know what it is but i've had a lot of I've heard a lot of people had some very bad experiences with people in terms of celebrities. So it can go a bit left. And because I'm just a regular guy, I don't have anything to offer the girl, right? I, I'm not a record, I'm not a record a and &R, a record label a and &R. I don't have my own brand. I'm just a dude, right? The fact that she went out of a way to be extra nice was like, oh, okay, cool. So I always kind of kept that memory in my head. But then obviously over the years, she's done many things in public that people haven't been a fan of. Again, not been really paying attention. But the funny thing is, like, I think we have this thing called, um, was it, is it the Master Singer? Something, anyway, we have one of those flipping crappy shows where somebody sings and, you know, you, the, the judges turn their back and they dramatically turn around and be like, oh, it's a human, you know, that bullshit, right? And she's one of the judges on this show, right? The Master Singer. I think it's called the, the Faceless. Faceless or Masters? One of these, one of these names. And every weekend that that show's on, she's trending because people just hate her opinions on music. They hate that she's on their panel, I'm assuming, at first because she hasn't really had the most successful music career you'd imagine. Even though I'd say the fact that she's not working a normal job is still a success. I think people always kind of get it misconstrued. Music in, To make it music is so difficult. Any entertainment industry, any entertainment artistic endeavor, it's just very hard to make it. So to have the ability to pay your bills doing that thing, even if it means you're doing it in dinner halls and you're having to play private gigs or whatever it doesn't really matter the fact that you're paying your bills in music is very difficult and the fact that you're doing it and not working a normal job is something to be heralded but i guess if you're just an average day everyday everyday fan you're like thinking hold on how can she be judging people on the stage when she hasn't sold this amount of records hasn't had a number one in ages blah 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 but she always gets loads of really horrible horrible um 
you know, uh, tweets coming her way over the weekend. So when she then went ahead and broke the COVID or the lockdown um, rules, it was like, oh, come on, Rita, man. You're just kicking yourself in the nuts here. Um, and then, um, of course, when it transpired that, you know, she paid off the manager and then that manager ended up getting fired. It was like, God almighty. And then another story came out that the venue might lose their license. You're like, Jesus Christ. If ever there was a way to really punch yourself in the nuts, this was it. So this is courtesy of BBC News. But it says the venue get to keep their license. So it's some um, actual good PR for Rita for once. It says a restaurant that broke lockdown rules to host Rita Ora's 30th birthday will now not have its license revoked. The pop star team offered the manager Casa of Casa Cruz in Notting Hill five grand grand to allow guests to attend her party on the 20th of november during the second coronavirus lockdown police said clinton and chelsea council said it will be suspend the venue's license for six weeks the venue said it was grateful for the council's careful consideration the restaurant's director nick fellows we look forward to serving our its customers and community as soon as preempted to reopen Rita or as previously appointed for the party now i'm still thinking to myself right why was there a need to go to a restaurant in your area that she most probably was popping into the weeks prior to it to organize and you know sort out how much of a bribe she's going to pay the manager why not just hire or book an airbnb someone leave someone else's name get a private chef to go and fully cater the thing no social media and just go and enjoy yourself there i didn't actually see the she could have easily flew under the radar doing it that way don't you think so as opposed to just you know booking a restaurant in your area again I'm not for breaking lockdown rules, but if you're fully insistent on, you know, because these people do exist, these flipping, um, you know, especially women. Women have a thing with birthdays that are just, you know, uh, we will, as men, we will never understand. I think as myself, as being a non-birthday celebrator, I will never really get. But women really love their birthdays, right? Birthday month, birthday week, you know, birthday, whatever, quarter. It's flipping insane. If that's the case, you don't want to be disturbed. Just go and, you know, rent an amazing uh mansion somewhere in the middle of the countryside you know bust your friends over a couple of weeks prior to cover yourselves whatever it may be or get them to kind of lock down remotely i don't know whatever you may do but there's ways to do it if you have the means that would be far that that would basically you could basically make that five grand stretch that you paid that manager a lot more than doing whatever all this shit was and imagine them getting sacked as well so how much is that five grand worth especially in a lockdown right you're working a job imagine you're a restaurant manager of yeah of any restaurant during lockdown you're not working so you're probably not getting paid i don't know how it is in most restaurants but imagine hmm, maybe i'm not sure maybe some restaurants managers get salaried i'm not sure but i know for sure staff don't you work by the hour but let's imagine you are getting work by the hour or let's imagine you're salaried either way you're not making that much so you're not making that much. You're not sure if you're going to get your next month's paycheck. Every, every month's are like up in the air. You get offered five grand. You're like, fuck it. Cool. Let's take it. Then you get fired. So that five grand now is like two grand because you're having to spec it out for, you know, however many months you can ahead of time to make sure you have um, enough money to kind of pay your bills to keep roof over your head. It's just not worth it. I really don't understand anything about this story in that regard, especially from more so from Rita Ora's side and the other side as well from the manager of the actual bar itself. It says, yeah, Rita Ora, um, 30 year old Rita Ora flew to Egypt to a private performance on 21st. So she not only did the uh, party before, uh, after, which we are aware of, she also flew to Egypt prior on return to Fallen Day. She, she should have to stay for two weeks. So she obviously broke her quarantine to go and do her birthday, which was, you know, epic. She could have just celebrated her birthday in Egypt and no one would have known right um it's, it, it, of course she didn't take any pictures no one was on either but it, it continues instead she threw a birthday party in london which violated lockdown rules and prevented household mixing indoors um it says miss aura has said that she deserved criticism for her actions and would donate her fee from the court to from the concert to charity the general manager casa cruz uh scotty batari told police that he was contacted by the representative of miss aura the other day and offered fifty thousand to off five thousand okay to open a venue in a statement police but said that he accepted the offer because he was greedy and fully aware that the event breached the regulation so what is he oh he's the general manager <clears throat> okay that's worse general managers like you're managing other locations you're not only the managing you're not only like the door opener or the keyholder sorry of that particular restaurant so that is definitely something that he probably shouldn't have done he also confirmed that he did not receive the five thousand that was offered so not only did rita or get this man fired Offer him a, a bribe in, you know, that obviously led to his firing. She didn't even give him the money in the first place. And this idea that she's going to give the money to charity. Mm, let's see. Um, Mr. Batari, is that his name? Mr. Ba Bat Batahari. Batahari, Batatari, Batarari, Batatari. 
Batatarai, however you pronounce that, said the beginning. He said he he began admitting guests at about seven. Between fifteen and twenty people were at the venue at its peak at nine. The venue was found to have breached licensing rules by not following police into the premises. Batatarai also suggests the criminal uh, investigations, while four particles were issued with fines at the time. So only four people got um, fines. I guess they were probably part of Rita Ora's team that stayed around. Everyone else got told to go basically leave. The council's licensing committee said the breach was extremely serious as it has hampered the policy's ability to investigate the incident. And look at the venues. Look at it. There's like BMW 1 Series. Is that 1 Series or ZX? I'm not sure what it was that one. You know what I mean? Like, God, man. In order to keep its license and operate, Mr. Casta Cruz uh, banned Batari from the premises to provide extra safeguards to ensure CTV operational. The venue also has implemented a noise dispersal and external management plan to agree to meet local residents to at least twice a year to discuss the operation of the premises. Mr. Fallows said the restaurant would comply with additional um, conditions on the premises. Casta Cruz will keep its license until the venue has had a chance to appeal against the committee decision. Jesus Christ, man. And if you know one thing about um, the UK, it's very rare that restaurants get their license taken away from them. If it's a club, this would have got taken away ages ago. But restaurants in the UK, especially in London, we love a good restaurant. Clubs, nightclubs and stuff and bars get fucked. But restaurants, oof. So yeah, big up Rita Ora. Good press, mate. Good press. Oh, nice bit of water there. Um, Next on the list here... This isn't really news, but this is kind of news, but not really news. This is courtesy of UK Gossip TV. It says here, Katie Price says she's disabled for life after a freak accident in Turkey. I shouldn't be laughing, of course, because it's a freak accident, but it's just hilarious to me that Katie Price, a.k.a. Jordan, always, always, consistently for her entire career in public life, has somehow managed to keep her name in the tabloids for like, what, five decades? No, she's not that old. Four decades? Three decades? Con on a consistent basis i'm gonna say there probably hasn't been a month in a cal there probably hasn't been a calendar month in a calendar year where she has not been in the headlines in some way shape or form whether it's in print or in digital form especially digital form right because in print maybe you know you could there might be some months where they might have to i don't know skip a few other stories but in digital format where you can you know you know most likely she generates a good amount of click throughs She's always going to be front news and, and centre. And she always managed a way to get herself in the papers. And again, in recent weeks, she's had a bit of an issue with her her son that she has with uh, Dwight York. I remember her. He's kind of an absentee father. And obviously, he has some learning disabilities. And there's a lot of outpouring of support with that. And she kind of essentially raises him essentially online, right? Everyone knows everything about his life and stuff, which is odd. But hey, she's a celebrity. It's what it is. But God almighty, how does she do it? And this, again... Freak accident, cool. I don't see why that's our concern. It doesn't really, you know what I mean? It's not our business. We can't really do nothing for you. It is what it is, isn't it? Um, I guess maybe next time put down the liquor when you're climbing things. I don't know. But hey, what does it say here? It says, um, Katie Price has been declared disabled after breaking her feet in a freak accident. And she says she's crippled and scarred for life. She fell for off a 25 foot wall in Turkey last year and has been told that she would never be able to wear heels again or walk for more than 20 minutes per day. What she was doing in Turkey last year, I will not know. But hey, continues. Um, KT was sent off, has a sent off for a blue badge so she can park next to shops and is seeking legal advice about her injuries. So I should be laughing, but this is hilarious. Bro, bro she, she stays in the headlines, bro. This is legitimately a talent um she says i'll never be the same i've accepted that but i'm staying positive the accident has changed my life and it's only just sunk in if i'm honest i've been given two seats sets of painkillers and i can't take them because i'm scared of becoming addicted <laughs> not only is she took it is it going to be misery pain to be with a wheelchair it's going to be pain about nearly becoming an addict on flipping benzos and shit it's just oh yeah yeah it does not stop with this woman it does not stop man um, but I can't take the, the it feels like you, you you've been electrocuted like the shocks and lightning shooting up your feet all day I've got a limp when I walk now as one of the leg is shorter than the other because the metal in the foot I waddle like a duck it does make me feel a bit paranoid it's one thing that I know, it's one thing after another I know every day is a nightmare at the moment in the life of pricey yeah we know mate every day is a nightmare but it's a great way to keep the, the bills paid isn't it uh, Katie broke her foot falling off a 20 foot 20 foot foot 
25 foot wall onto concrete ramp in Turkey last July. She told the son, I'm registered disabled and I've got letters from the doctor to certify me for a blue badge, which I've sent off for. All these little tricking buzz. Why do we need to know this? I have a park near the entrance to the shops all the time. Otherwise, it will be crippling me to walk from the back of the car. I can't carry anything from the shops either. Even when walking up the stairs, the heavier items, the more my hurt, my, my feet hurt. Stricken Katie admits that she's living a nightmare as the accident has had an impact on her everyday jobs. She says she's seeking legal advice. I'm getting some legal advice at the moment. I'm not usually the kind of person to do something like this, but this has had a massive effect. When it's cold, my feet ache at night. I can't get rid of the constant pain. Once I sit down, I can't get up because it hurts so much. Bruv, this woman, this woman will find a way to keep herself in headlines. Again, I guess get well soon. I guess, you know, I don't really care to be fair don't know the woman but god almighty man what a legend what a legend we move on then we've got here um an update courtesy of what is this this is from the shade borough this is courtesy of uk comedic personality chunks who have only become familiar with over lockdown i've been listening to a lot more stuff that i probably oh, been watching sorry a lot more stuff that i probably wouldn't have watched prior and um he's got a really good show on youtube with young philly and it's like a football show where they interview loads of footballers what, what channel is it on again I think it's on Pro Direct Soccer. Yeah, with a place where you buy all your boots. So they interview loads of people that play professional football within that world, football players, coaches, and all that sort of stuff. And it's great because in the UK, for the most part, our professional footballers are, or athletes for the most part, are quite wary of the media. They tend to kind of keep them at arm's length. And if they do speak to the media, it's always this kind of hands behind the back, like, yeah, you know, um, you know we'll do, we've got to do better. We go again, the lads, the lads, you know, the next the next game, next result. It's always kind of really boring robotic um, interviews. So these two guys have really kind of broken the mould in terms of opening up um, the possibility for footballers to have these really um, loose kind of like agenda free conversations where they're essentially mostly talking about boots and, and you know, stuff to do with stuff, stuff to do with their sport. It's not in kind of music and cultural stuff. It's not it's not like nonsense kind of things or trying to catch them out in some way, shape or form or create some sort of um, narrative. So it's pretty cool, very um, jovial experience. And these two guys, obviously one of our most prominent sort of personalities in the UK. And this is coach of the shape Borough. It's basically the guy chunks one of the um, one part of the duo. He basically says he opens up about his struggle with mental health um, during this lockdown. And again, it's another reminder as to how difficult and how eye opening the situation has been living in uh, a lockdown during you know uh, the spread of COVID nineteen. What we've basically been able to identify, I guess, even within ourselves, is that there are indoor people and there are outdoor people, right? And people that just need to be around hum other humans. And I think for myself, I've struggled, don't get me wrong, but I've kind of been okay because outside of clubbing and outside of like other stuff that I do and going to work, I don't really leave my house too often. I'm quite regimented in the stuff that I do. Like I'm I'm pretty much cut and dry, especially when, you know, life was normal. I'd go to work at a particular time. I'd come back at a particular time. I'd, no, sorry, I'd go during a particular time. I go work at a particular time, come back at a particular time, uh, record a particular time, write a particular time, read a particular time. But it was all kind of regimented, managed a Friday, and on the weekend I'd get a bit loose. But I had a regiment that I was kind of sticking with. Now, for people that are like highly social, someone like himself who's kind of just approaching his sort of like, you know, uh, pop moment in terms of becoming a big name in the industry and getting all these deals and getting flown out, it must have been it must have been such a shock to kind of like have all this exposure, become this big brand. People love you. Um, you're obviously getting all this great uh, positive attention. You're suddenly about to get your foot in the industry and then bam, it gets pulled away from you because, you know, we're in, uh, we're in a pandemic. And it must really mess with your head, especially when fundamentally you're a person who does like to go. It's kind of because I'd imagine he's the kind of person that goes to industry events, um, goes to all these meetups and stuff, and is in a particularly very social social group. And then suddenly that's pulled away from you. It can be a real, real big reality shock. So um, I'm sure there's others who are feeling this way. So it's good to hear him as prominent as he is speaking about it openly. So let's hear what he has to say regarding this issue. Um, mostly, mostly to be fair, like last the last year, well, not the last year, as in, in 2019, early 2020, it was just more. I don't know, I was, ha I was happy, like I felt like I was happy, but then all the time I was just be sitting on my bed, just like not wanting to speak to him. I think it was more like mood swings, and I had no like reason for it. Yeah. Um, and I didn't want to feel like brazen up because it was kind of like, well, I'm chunks, I should be happy with my life, how I was going and stuff, you know what I mean? Because it's kind of, I don't want to feel like 
um, I'm appreciative of like what everything that's been happening kind of thing. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna just keep it to myself and ball it up because yeah. I don't want people to think, why are you upset? You know what I mean? And I don't even know the answer myself. So it was a weird one. It's a very weird one. But I think um, it's just like when you have your family and friends around you, um, it's kind of like you can think, speak about anything and then they'll be there to help you kind of thing. So um, yeah, definitely. There's this, it's just in t- at times it just goes up and down. But uh, I just try and, like I said, I just try and stay positive um, because it's just life. You know what I mean? It happens. You mentioned that you live in a household with, like, you know, many of your friends. You can have conversations yeah. and see how everyone's doing at any time. How important... Yeah, um, mostly, mostly to be fair, like... And do you think it is to keep checking in with your friends if you don't if you don't live together, if you're not always in constant contact? 100%, because, like, there's times... Well, like, we speak a lot about just mental and, and how everyone's feeling, so it's kind of like, if we, if we get to speak about, like, maybe, what, twice, three times a week or something, it's like think about your friend that you haven't checked upon for like a month or two months or like, you know what I mean? It's like how many things have they been going through within the last two months? It's like, there's times where like I'll, I'll message a friend or they'll message me and we haven't spoken like a month and I'm like, oh, what's, what's been going on? And he just tells me loads of new things. I'm just like, wow, like a lot has happened. You know what I mean? So it can literally be in a matter of minutes, a matter of days. Um, so it's, it's very important to check up with friends because like a lot can change very quickly. So, and especially in the situation where in this current pandemic, yeah. like uh, people are losing jobs and people are mental health is just, deteriorating as time goes by so it's kind of like it's even more so important now um to check up on your peoples the irony of what you said obviously what you're saying is completely true but the funny thing with me i guess what i've noticed is i've become more recluse i've not really spoken to anybody outside of maybe three people now um and i think again that's probably a uh that's probably a fault of my own personality and how i navigate the world but like i said before i'm a little bit of a recluse i'm a bit of a lone ranger i don't really tend to have a big group and circle of friends with me you know even though considering my background and where i've kind of come from i always was the sort of like person that was surrounded by a harem of like you know people that i refer to as friends quote unquote but over the years i kind of you know slowly but surely pulled myself away from it not because i thought i was better or anything just because you know i just didn't really want to hang around them anymore so it is what it is you move on and then i was thinking which is probably one way to think about it but during lockdown i was thinking if anything people would probably be more willing to like stick to the people that they're actually friends with in you know normal life um then it would be to like because i'd imagine the first let's say if we could split yeah let's say lockdown the first year probably a lot of people went out of their way to connect with people they haven't spoken to in a long time there's a lot of people throwing out like random oh man i hope you're all right message to somebody you haven't spoken to in 10 years because you know it, we're going through this thing together it's you know you're feeling a bit of um disabandonment blah 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 but then as time would go on i'd imagine you'd kind of want to focus in who you're kind of sharing your love with and connections with because you know it is what it is time goes on you've only got a uh, um, bandwidth for a certain amount of people so that would be who you'd focus on but i don't know maybe there's something to be said for just reaching out to everybody in general and just throwing them a little you know thanks and whatever um thanks a heads up or what's up whatever it may be i was thinking of doing a thing because at the moment my my imac i'm not sure what it is or my macbook but Maybe because it's it's linked to my old phone that I had, but it's got all the birthdays of everybody that I was friends with on Facebook because I delete my Facebook and start a new one because I just wanted to have a, a fresh start. And I just wanted to make it kind of plain so I could just kind of um, link it to my artist profile and shit. But for some reason, all of my all the birthdays from my original Facebook are still on there. So I've got Facebooks of like people that I don't really speak to at all zero. And I was thinking I could use that opportunity just to kind of message them, random them and say, birthday, oh, happy birthday, hope you're well. Just checking up on you, making sure you're good during these times, isn't it? But I don't know, man. It doesn't really seem sincere to me because I really don't care, right? Like, legitimately. So I just about care about my own birthdays, let alone somebody else. But I guess that's part of being someone's friend, isn't it? Reaching out even when you don't really in the mood just because you know it's going to make them feel better. But hey, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. Let me know in the comments down below if you've been reaching out to your friends or leaving them alone. Next on the list, we have some semi-good news if you're into that kind of good stuff regarding lockdown, this is courtesy of Sasha Lord, who is the nighttime economy advisor for Man- Greater Manchester. And he put up some two very interesting tweets that I kind of want to quickly go over. So tweet number one was, according to a report or leak in the Times today, when hospitality reopens, it will look like the ridiculous need for a meal is going to be um, scrapped. If true, it's very welcome news and something that myself and many other voices in the industry have been campaigning for. And if you remember, 
um, maybe it was lockdown two or something, but there was a period in time in the UK where to open up bars and restaurants, they required um, these places to serve food in order to serve alcohol. And I guess the whole premise behind it from the government side of things was that they wanted to limit the amount of people that were in bars and restaurants of just drinking. So you had to be eating a meal and then after you eat a meal, you can kind of go out to keep the cycle of people coming in and out, right? And to keep them from just congregating in, in closed environments. But I guess as time went on, um, that was proven to be a little bit of a dumb idea. Didn't necessarily work the way they wanted it to work. It was kind of like, meh, 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 meh. so a lot of people within the industry advised and stuff or campaigning against it because, of course, there is still quite a large segment of the industry or bars out there in the sector that don't offer meals. Right? They don't have the possibility to offer them because they don't have the the you know the resources to do so so you're kind of xing them out again so it's like a double whammy we're already you're already having to operate at a reduced capacity and then on top of that the government's telling you hey you go you, you can only open up if you have meals to be offered so that will definitely open up a lot of avenues for in my opinion the possibility for nightclubs to reopen because if they can just open up bars to limited capacity then there should be no danger to having people um st uh, dancing in place with reduced capacity in certain nightclubs in my opinion another one he says, tweet here, decent week, strong leaks dropping about no 10 p.m. curfew and the removal of the ridiculous milk condition. The PM's confirming a proper timeline with dates will come on the 22nd of February. Well past 10 million vaccination, 050 done by May, United winning 9-0. I'll take that. So the really thing to kind of uh, focus on is the vaccinations, which kind of is a, obviously a good sign uh, for the UK. Because I think there was a leak in the Daily Mail that basically said that if we continue at the same sort of speed that we're at now with vaccinations, everybody that's at risk would probably get done by sometime in April. But maybe it's May, depending on how quickly they've been done. But be between the months of April and May, everyone that's at risk, which is basically everyone over 50, can get vaccinated. And then there's also the possibility that I've read somewhere that if they reach a 75% uh, threshold in terms of covering everyone about 50, 75% of the way, they will then open it up for everybody else under the age of 50 to go and get the vaccine if they want to get it done. So that would inevitably open up the possibility for certain clubs, certain festivals to get hosted this year, which is no coincidence as well that that festival called um, We Out Here that's hosted i'm not gonna say where in london i forgot maybe it's victoria park I'm not sure where it is somewhere in east london or is it stuff somewhere in south doesn't matter but there's a festival called we out here that i'm assuming is put together by giles peterson it's very you know popular people seem to like it um i think the last one might have been 2019 not too sure the first one don't hold me on that but they sent out an email today earlier on uh, a mailer basically saying that you can secure your and your kind of your ticket for 30 quid and I'm assuming they probably did that because they're in the, you know, they've kind of, you know, got their ear to the ground. They've heard some things, rumblings in the background. And there's obviously still the possibility that even if we don't vaccinate everybody, there's still the possibility of rapid testing. There's still the possibility of... Um, of having a limited capacity. It's all a possibility of when bars do open, they just do the same thing they did last year, summer, or they'll just have people, you know, technically doing these kind of outdoor raves or these outdoor festivals, sorry, um, which you can kind of permit. No, you can kind of increase the capacity because it's outdoors. And the idea is that if it's outdoors and the virus spreads less and all these other things. So there are some good things there on the horizon, light at the end of the tunnel. Again, don't probably get your hopes up too much, but the idea that we're not going to be able to rave again until next year might get scrapped. So my early prediction about us returning to wherever we were raving at in 2019, again in 2020. Yeah, I said before that I only see us going back to raving how you went in 2019, again in 2022. So wherever you were, if you were in that cup somewhere, shoulder to shoulder with some strangers, that'll probably only happen again in 2022. But looking at what's happening now, widely, especially in the UK, we might be able to do that by the end of this year, which will be an absolute turnaround for the books, especially when you consider how poorly we've done, we've dealt with COVID, right? Um, There was no zero covid plan we essentially you know wanted to do herd immunity it didn't work um you know the restrictions weren't tough enough they didn't come around quick enough uh, and then by the time the various of the vax of the, by the time the different variations of the virus sprung up we were lucky that the vaccinations um sorry that the vaccine was already developed and approved and that kind of uh, allowed us to sort of like uh beat that wave of things isn't it? in most regard but we haven't really dealt with it the right way but regardless we take your victories as you take them this is basically a scrappy um one nil win even though we've been battered the entire game and i'll take it i will take it next on the list we have some very unfortunate news courtesy of tmz 
Morgan Wallen, um, a very popular country music artist, was unfortunately caught uh, saying some very <laughs> inflammatory words, let's say, whilst he was out and about with his friends that essentially um, caused him his entire career to get cancelled. He has been essentially removed from the from the music industry because he decided it was a good idea to refer to his Caucasian friend as the N word on their way home, like a complete failure of a situation. Now, um, it's funny. It's funny because it's funny, right? That you know, um, this white guy thinks it's like okay to like refer to his white friend as the N word even though he's a country music artist, because I know people will be saying, oh, no, there's certain people in certain communities that say the N-word. Okay, cool. Well, you know context matters. If context matters and you grew up in the hood and you are kind of one of those quote-unquote wiggers and you say the N-word, there's still context to it. People are still not going to be happy if you say the word anyway, right? It is what it is. But if there's this really, really white country music artist who has no connection to urban community whatsoever, um, who is kind of representing a, a music industry that is well known to be quite racismo in their approach and their kind of um, acceptability of certain people, right? You only see, you have to see what happened with Little Nas X and Old Town Country Road, even though he had flipping Billy Ray Cyrus on the remix, right? It's just insane how the, how that how he was treated in the country music um, genre. It just makes it even more funnier that this kid would think it would be smart and wise to do so. Even more funnier that he would do it in the second day into Black History Month. The second day. After everything that's happening in the US, da -da 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 -da, he thought it'd be good PR. And then we add on top of it, he was also the same guy that got caught, I think it was maybe a few weeks, a few months ago or something like that. You know, living a rock star life. He went to a party somewhere. I'm not sure if he's got a girlfriend or wife or whatever. That would probably make it worse. But in fact, he went to some party and was kind of, you know, video, videoed on TikTok somewhere, kissing up on random girls. He was literally, I don't know, tongue kissing the entire club, it looked like, of the girls that are like under the age of 21. Which, you know, some rock star shit in it. Do your thing. But I guess before an SNL show with COVID going on, it just didn't look right. And of course, he was kind of duly taken off of COVID, um, duly taken off of SNL. I think it was the same week as Bill Burr, he was meant to perform. And then I think he came back on the kind of the following couple of weeks later. He did Fear of Warns podcast. He came across really well. Some, some kind of damage control PR move that was very well done. He kind of came across really interesting, laid back kind of dude. But this is just one of those things that you just can't come back from, unfortunately. In the world that we live in now, um, same things. It would be, it would probably be easy to come back from being accused of assaulting a woman than it would be from saying the n-word in this society it feels like i feel like if you had the right pr spin you could maybe get out of the whole assaulting a woman thing by painting the lady as a psycho i don't know there's something that you could do but the n-word with a strong r -hoo -hoo -hoo, that's tough that's tough it's courtesy of tmz it says um morgan wallen Hells the N-word after Rowdy Night Out apologizes. I promise to do better. Ah! <laughs> so this is the video here from TMZ. Let's play it. Take care of this pussy. Hey, actually. Hey, y'all too? Nice, take care of this pussy ass motherfucker. Hey, Gracie, take care of this pussy ass Twice. So maybe it's an inside joke. Right? Maybe it's a thing within their little social group that they call each other this. Cool. No problem. Do it behind closed doors, in your own privacy, not around strangers. Um, again, maybe the, the other thing too, who's the person recording this, right? Who's the telltale that decided to sit outside their home and wait for these guys to come back from a night out and record them saying these profanities? Maybe they had an altercation prior and they're waiting to stick it on them, but that is also something I don't really um, promote, right? That snitch culture thing, knocking on your neighbours is really disgusting. I'm not a big fan of it whatsoever, but again, he only has himself to blame. Morgan Wallen returned home from Sunday night from a rowdy night with friends, normal night out, right? If you're a rock star. As he walked up his driveway, he held the N-word other profanities in an in all on a video and Wallen is remorseful. The country star and a group of buddies had just spent a night out in Nashville. When they arrived at Morgan's home around midnight, they were extremely loud, honking horns and talking loudly, loud enough to piss off neighbours. One of the neighbours began recording the antics. So, what I'm led to believe reading into this, maybe prior to this, um, Morgan Wallen and his friends were being a little bit were being shitty neighbours right they were just partying all night partying all day making noise you know doing the shit that American neighbours don't really tolerate too much like enjoying your home odd but hey and then I'm assuming they got complaints called by the police and nothing changed so one day I haven't, I haven't probably like um, 
one random day, maybe a neighbor probably overheard them saying something mad. I'm like, wow, I think I heard them say the N word. And then they're just probably looking forward to repeat it again. Maybe. But it just seems odd that they kind of time it at that exact moment and then he'd say it on camera too. Maybe it was just that was just the thing he was just saying throughout the entire thing. I can imagine it. Because you know, you're with a social group of friends and you, you end up using a phrase, a word, and it ends up just, it ends up being an inside joke that makes everyone in the group die of laughing like crying tears but everyone else i hear is like what the fuck well why is this funny but it's just like you know you, you had to be there at a certain time of day blah, blah 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 that might be to do the n-word that might be the same thing in their group it's an odd humor don't get me wrong but you know what it is what it is um as morgan appears to stumble towards his house he tells someone to watch over a guy in the group he says take care of this uh, <laughs> before finally heading in there's another video here on a ring camera Bruv, they've got this guy in full 8K in it, man. God damn it. This is a ring camera from across the street, too. Honking horns, of course. All right. It looks like a normal, like, what, residential street, right? It doesn't really look like a... Because I think this kind of behavior might get tolerated if you live, like, an apartment block somewhere on the side of Miami Beach, right? Because I guess most of the occupants are never home. They're mostly foreign investors or playboys and stuff that are running around the country or the world. So, and, you know, and they're all used to people getting up to all kinds of nonsense. But when you're living on just a quiet, normal family street, you probably have to watch your P's and Q's. And if there's one thing that you can't be doing on these streets, it's pissing off the Karens. You have to make friends with the Karens. Make friends with the Karens and probably could get away with saying an N-word. But the fact they didn't make friends with them and you just kind of, you know, took their kindness for weakness, they definitely ended up getting him back. Uh, it continues here. The video uh, from a neighbor's doorbell can cam shows the scene of Morgan uh, held the profanities and racial prof uh, epithet, and it's apparent why neighbors looked outside. There's another video here of M Morgan Wallen um, kissing a young lady at the door, and it said the video was recorded on Monday morning again by another same neighbor. Um, as for as for Sunday, it's unclear exactly when Morgan went, but we do know that he had made at least one stop at Luke Bryan's restaurant, 32 Bridge, where he jumped on stage for a quick performance. And then the update, I guess, was here. Morgan Wallen denounced after hurling racial slur, radio, Cyrus, label and CMT shelve him. This is insane, isn't it? <laughs> he just got binned by the entire industry. So this is the, um, Morgan Wallen is feeling remorseful. It's feeling immediate backlash against uh after after using the N word. Music platforms are come chop, dropping him left, right, and center. Um, fellow country music artists are also condemning his behavior. The singer's music was reportedly banned from Columbus Media overnight, which is one of the bigger videos chains for the country music across the nation. The directive from the station's brass told all affiliates to scrub the anything of Morgan from Wednesday's slate of programming. The memo obtained by Variety reads, Morgan Wallen, extremely important. Team, unfortunately, country music star Morgan Wallen was captured on video Sunday, meaning using a racial slur. Um, effective immediately we ex we request that all of morgan's music be removed from our playlist without exception more to follow many of his own peers are decrying his use of racial slur but there seems to be a difference of opinion whether the asset incident or a bigger problem that's coming to light and this is a person called morin who's this called morin morris and kelsia bellerin Ballerin saying the following the news of Nashville tonight does not represent music in this country music another person said it is representative of the country of our town because this isn't his first scuffle and he has do just demolished a huge streaming record last month regardless we all know it wasn't his first time using that word we keep them rich and protected at all costs with no recourse yep we we'd be dropped endorsements lost and social pariahs to music row. um for example country music da -da -da, and I guess the latest updates as the story was developing was this country music star Rick Mickey Gautin, one of the handful of well-known black singers in the genre, just spoke her piece about the Morgan Gallon situation. And she gives some poignant insight, including an olive branch to Morgan himself. She writes, when I read comments saying this is not who we are, I laugh because this is exactly who country music is. I've witnessed it for 10 good years. You guys should just read some of the vile comments held at me on a daily basis. It's a cold truth to face it, but it's the truth. Yes, yeah, true. Imagine Imagine being a black um country music star in america now especially with the way the country is god damn it she's probably read some absolute horrendous stuff but here's her tweets as well this is mickey gayton saying the following um 
I question on a daily basis as to why I continue to uh, to fight to be in the industry that seems to hate me so much. But then I realize that there is new artists of color, all bright eyed and excited to be in the industry. Yeah, this artist might not have the strength to fight for themselves, but I do. And I'll be that artist warrior for them if they pursue their dreams. I love country music so much. There are amazing people in this genre behind the scenes and in front of the cameras that have kept me sane all these years. Those are the people who we must remind ourselves are out there and worth supporting. And lastly, I do not believe in cancel culture watching anyone fall from grace is a terrible thing to see people must be given a chance to change morgan must feel the weight of his words but completely throwing him someone away is detrimental to anyone's mental health exactly that's what i truly believe especially during lockdown there is never a worse there's never been a worse time to get cancelled than during a lockdown because everyone's on their phone whatever little indiscretion you do gets heightened and am amplified because people are bored and they've got nothing else better to do and what what is better to do than bury somebody online if you're a stranger right it must be it must feel good it must feel exhilarating but for that person that's getting cancelled it's horrible because it seems like there's no way out of you of this of the flipping um quicksand that you're slowly being engulfed in so there has to be some route to redemption, right? There has to be some route that he could come back in the street. You might have to sit this one out for a period in time because, hey, it's Black History Month after all, but there has to be a way back. It continues. Another update says you can now add iHeart Radio donations or radio chains to a list of platforms. Yankee and Morgan's music iHeart announced Wednesday is pulling the plug on airing the distressed country music in the wake of using a racial slur. The spokesman of the company said he has nearly 1,000 stations in the US and said in light of Morgan Weller's well, recent accusations involving use of racial slur, we have made a decision to remove his music and content from our stations immediately. <sighs> Maybe a part of me thinks as well, like, can't the market just decide that he's a racist and not listen to his music? If he is or if he isn't, like, isn't that shouldn't should that be left to the to the consumers of the music itself? Like, I don't I don't know, man. I don't really like record labels uh, getting in and becoming morality police. Like, should they just go back into the archives and start listing and reading off all the names of fellow artists that have spoken about domestic abuse, uh, sexual abuse, physical abuse, um, you know, cheating, whatever it may be, whenever it may be crimes. Should we do that as well? Like, how far back do we want to do you want to go from it? Like, honestly, I don't know, man, I'm, I'm a little bit. I'm not really sold on this idea that they can just cancel this guy's career completely because he decided, again, being a black guy, saying what he said, you know, maybe because I'm, I know what country music people are like, right? So I'm not surprised. It's not like, oh my God, a country music star has some very uh, closeted, bigoted opinions of people that aren't the same race as him. Like, I'm not that surprised. It doesn't take, it doesn't take me aback as much as it should do, right? Um, but also, I'm not, I don't really know how right or just it is for a record label to decide and pick and choose who gets a credit and who doesn't it's already difficult enough to make it an industry last thing you need is for a record label to decide because it's the flavor of the month because again only because we're living in the current era if you would have said this maybe 10 years ago it wouldn't have been a thing but because we're in the current era we're living in now things are changing certain language is not really um uh, tolerated as much as it is before there's a lot more of acknowledgement of the black experience around the world people are a little bit more sensitive to it right cool no problem but is this the right way to deal with it really like what does this actually do it continues here um the hits just keep coming on for morgan now his record label um has put him on shelf saying his contract with him is on freeze for now what does i say again what well, record labels are always the ones to hold on to you man they're, they're the masters of playing the game uh big loud independent label based in Asheville says in the wake of big loud has made a decision to suspend morgan's contract indefinitely they go on to say the republic records distributed music has fully is so suspending it what's that mean until he's basically back so he's going to go on an anti-racist course. He's probably, do you think he's going to get taught by that, um, what's her name? The Angela Woman. Right? I read that um, anti-racism book. That'd be lows. Or he might go to like Starbucks training. It's unclear what indefinitely suspended contract means in the big picture, but it sounds like they're stopping short of dropping Morgan from the roster, just putting a music biz of his on pause. It's true. Because he's big money, man. This Morgan Wallen guy gets some really, really big streaming numbers. I checked his Spotify and he's no, he's no joke. So they definitely don't want to take him off completely because that's going to hurt their pockets. CMT, Country Music Television, is also putting the plug on him saying they're removing any appearance of, of Morgan on the platform. As they turn to the it's like, come on, guys, man. Really? Come on, man. Come on. I don't know. Let the market decide, isn't it? Um, that's my thinking. This kind of... Uh, a spokesperson for Sirius XM tossed TMZ the satellite radio station has pulled his content from Sirius XM as well Jesus Christ a spokesman from MS Communication tells TMZ he's Yankee and Morgan's music from he's been deleted deleted so this is again this is why I say 
working in entertainment in the Hollywood industry can be so cutthroat and so, um, you know, it just can be awful, right, to work in it because when you're up, you're up. So when he's up, everyone wants to be his friend. They're DM DMing him for guest list spots. They want to go to the after party, right? Everyone's around him. I'm sure now during his most darkest moments, all these friends that he kind of thought were his friends aren't around him anymore. They probably all left. No one's answering the calls or replying back to text messages. So this is when, if you're really his friend, you should be gathering around the dude and supporting him as much as you can because it's going to be a very, very long and lonely way for him to come back um, to where he was prior. I do believe in redemption. I do think he should be given a second chance. I think the idea that record labels can decide um, who shouldn't be having a career and who should, considering the amount of other country music artists that have come prior to Morgan Wallen, who have said and done much worse in the industry on record outside the industry and weren't very and weren't punished to this extent is laughable but hey it is what it is and again if you're his friend support the dude be, rally around him but i think overall deleting the guy from the music industry completely is not going to solve the problem and if tomorrow you know it transpired you know knock on wood that doesn't happen but if you hear a story of him you know unfortunately um self-deleting how bad would everyone else feel that they've kind of driven him to this extent because they decided to pull away his one thing that was holding him together during these dark times? Let, but let me know in the comments below. Maybe I'm being too forgiving. Let me know what you think about Morgan Wallen um, getting cancelled for hurling the N-word at somebody who isn't black during after on the way to an after party. Oh, he's an absolute psychopath, isn't he? Absolute psychopath. Um, next on the list. Um, oh, yeah. I'm blowing my nose quickly, sorry. My... Hay fever is coming back and it's shooting like pains. Like a flood, flood of allergies is coming. I probably should just take my asthma pump and give me a couple of pumps. But hey, we will continue. So I was looking at all my, you know, missing the raves, wanting to get back out there, um, jumping and shouting and dancing for joy. And then I happened to stumble across my uh, previous party or club night that I used to put on with my friend in the Alibi. That was one of the first... Um, introductions I had to kind of putting on an event and also my first introduction to kind of electronic dance music in that extent um, I kind of got introduced to it mainly through the kind of minimal tech kind of people right big on Ricardo Villa Lobos and Luciano all those kind of people but mostly due to the whole the, you know back in the day when I used to go to like you know under 16s parties at like local community sh uh, community links kind of places and stuff whatever it may be I always had this idea of kind of putting on my own event and in the moment I kind of got uh step my foot into the kind of dance music scene i was like wow this is definitely a part i want to be included in i was lucky enough that when i got started working at this uh really cool store in london called 1948 when it first opened i got a very great opportunity to kind of work underneath this guy who was friends with a guy that was going to earn, uh, open the bar called Yellow Buy. They put us into contact before they were about to open it. I didn't really know how big of a deal these guys were behind the scenes, but they were. They were kind of, um, you know, uh, the sort of puppet masters in certain things. They were kind of people that were kind of putting certain scenes together, certain bars, restaurants, clubs, um, artists, collectives, all this sort of cool shit. And then they opened up the Yellow Buy and we happened to be the first group of like uh, promoters that were putting on events there. And it turned into one of our, one of the most popular nights there, if not one of the most, well, I guess in the group of one of the most popular, there's a few more that were pulling in a lot more numbers than us, but it was great to just be able to cultivate a club night, right? Um, or cultivate a little community of people, be able to put together a good lineup. Um, I learned how to DJ through this um, avenue as well. I got to DJ in front of people through this avenue too. It was flipping eye-opening and, and one of the moments I cherished the most because it, again, opened me up to a whole group of people socially that I probably wouldn't have met without going through the alibi. Because I think I would have met loads of people anyway socially because I would have definitely gone through and done an event. I've always been a person, especially when it comes to nightlife and dance music. Um, I want to take part, you know, review the situation, take part, take over. Remember? Yeah, you remember that uh, Dizzy Rascal track? Uh, I think it's called Cut Em Off, right? Is it Cut Em Off? I think it's Cut Em Off. Where is it? I think I might have it here. Yeah, there we go. Cut Em Off. Do you remember this one? Uh, I socialize in the situation. I socialize in the situation. I socialize and negotiate situation. Then cut them off. If you socialize, take negotiate. Yeah, that's that's basically me. That's basically me when it comes to um getting involved. I want to get involved. I want to go out. I want to socialize, but I also want to get involved. I want to go behind the camera. I want to play a part in it. And again, I started taking photographs at you know warehouse raids. I put together a scene. Um, R.I.P. My zine creeper. I might actually uh re um 
I might actually bring it back to the dead once the world reopens. Um, I was DJing, I was putting on events, I was doing some door things, being a door picker. I just wanted to be involved, but I wanted to kind of immerse myself in the culture because I thought, hold on, if I'm reading up on all these seminal people that set up all these amazing club nights and clubs and bars and put together these festivals, they're people just like you and I, right? And if they're able to do it and they're on, on, in their kind of local scene, I can kind of take whatever lessons that they've applied and apply it to mine. And of course, we did it, innit? We did it. And it was one of the, again, one of the best nights that was on the alibi we kind of um centered it more towards the uk funky uk garage then later it went into a bit of bass sort of theme and how we basically expect it is that we had like a usually a headliner and a co-headliner usually kind of and the night was from like 9 to 3 a.m which meant i usually did the graveyard shift which was from usually about eight or some doors actually open an alibi but it being a basement bar no one will come there until about 11 so i'd have to play to a crowd of like five people from like eight until 10 or 11 then the other guy that I was involved with doing so special with he'd take over from 11 to 12 and then the co-headliner would do from one to two and then the, the headliner would do from to to close by that time the alibi was absolutely heaving people jumping up in the air you know it was just absolutely incredible one of one of my most cherished moments something that i can't wait to get back into this is one of the um events that's still up on ari at the moment from the archives so special with ramsey and fen um and it's uh the alibi the 12th of august 2019 2011 right how long ago that was the alibi is obviously the cover that we did and i came up with the idea for our artwork which is essentially inspired by I'm going to say Vampire. Yeah, was it Vampire Weekend? It was Vampire Weekend. The album Control. Remember the album Control with the blonde girl kind of washed out in the little bit of square with a white ball around it? That's where the kind of idea came behind it. And of course, this was during the whole um, Tumblr era of girls as well right people always following random tumblers or random hot girls and models around the world and scenes and socialites so i just be trawling through tumblr i had many i'd like you know over 100 bookmarks of different little tumblers i'd follow I'd get loads of pictures of kind of under the radar models that people don't really know about sat them on the background whack some text over the top of it and bob's your uncle granny's your aunt so again one of my most fondest memories and i remembered that i've actually got footage i've got video footage of the actual event itself this ramsey and fen event that i recorded on my iphone which i have here uh via my youtube channel it's uploaded again from the first of september 29 2011 sorry ramsey and fen are so special i'll play a bit of the clip for you now uh it's good hey. <laughs> And again, this is what I was saying prior to all this stuff. I was saying that I wonder if all the clubs, because I think I was saying in the live stream that I wonder if all the, because there was a time when, because when I was, again, the, the second phase, I guess, of my, of my life experience, when I kind of kind of went, stopped doing uh, So Special and I kind of went out to the more like tech housey, underground, techno EV events around here in London, whatever it may be, um, the peanut factory and all that sort of stuff. There was, uh, there was a time when, people really like to have footage of their events so they can kind of blast it all over social. So I kind of use it as an opportunity to kind of, you know, say I'm a photographer and take pictures of events and kind of get in free. That was always good. Or get guests at least so I don't have to quick, I don't have to queue or anything. And then there was a time when that kind of stuff got a bit dated and people didn't want it anymore and it was looked at as a bit corny. And then it, got, it kind of stopped and then the Boiler Room kind of popped up out of the place and then people were like, if, why would I let you record if Boiler Room going to do it? Do you know what I mean? It's, it got a bit weird. And then I guess in the last recent few years, there's been a lot of conversation around people feeling as if like the smartphones and the dance floor are ruining the whole clubbing experience, right? They want people to just kind of engross themselves and just kind of get, you know, centered and grounded in the actual, you know, rave itself and communicate with people, duh, 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 duh. And then the conversation around the Berlin community, how they do stuff and they, you know, put stickers over your camera, et cetera, et cetera. But I was wondering if in a post-COVID world, we might go back to that because people are going to want to capture the moment because they've not been out for so long. They want to remember and hold on to it just in case, you know, touch wood doesn't happen, but just in case another flipping variant comes out, in, out of nowhere and we're all back in our homes again, not able to go outside. But then someone else made a comment on the live chat that, oh, actually what ended up happening, what people might just be like, you know what? The last thing I want to do is record stuff on my phone. I just want to go out and let loose, close my eyes and just kind of throw my hands in there and just dance. Who knows? But regardless... I'm definitely going to be taking some footage because why the hell not? And I remember, I remember all of this. I remember all of this. It's all coming back to me. Now. 
Man, I miss raving so much. Look at me, look at me. Oh, pick up Oli Ran. <laughs> Man, how I miss raving so much. Please come back. Please come back. I beg of you. I want to be back on the dance floor. But yeah, man, like, it got me thinking, you know what? When things reopen again, guess what I'm going to do? Put on another club night. That's what I'm going to do to get involved because I've been, you know, I, I, I sent out some feelers here and there to some online streaming shows to do some mixes on there. But you know how people are with this stuff, innit? So I've got my channel. My channel's popping off. Might as well do my own thing. Upload my test mixes. So definitely check those out. There's going to be some more coming at you very, very soon. Test mix on my channel. So make sure you check those out. Upload some of my text mixes. Do that. Put that out there. And then on the back end, what I end up doing is that I'll end up, when things reopen again, just put on my nights and kind of go around that way so I can kind of, you know, shoehorn my way into the scene that way. So I'll be able to book my artists who I know and love, get them over, uh, pay them a good fee, show them a good time, but also have the ability to kind of have my friends warm up, you know, prior, which we did prior to this, right? In this event, you just have my friends kind of playing before the actual main guest comes on and you're able to kind of, you know, book your favorite DJs that you know and love and some other people in in, in between. So that's going to be something that I'm going to definitely do when we uh, get back to life as per normal. I was thinking about it prior when, you know, lockdown was actually happening, but now the situation, how it is, I definitely feel like I need to get my foot back in the ring and get back involved because that is something that really gave me a lot of just juju. I felt a lot, of I felt alive doing that thing. You just feel it by the way I'm talking now. I felt like, you know, that was, it gave me a reason for flipping living, for doing all that. And nowadays, I don't have a reason to be alive. <laughs> um, and that might be where we have to end it for now, I think. Um, that was the Excellent English Show, episode number one. No, one. Episode number four. Three O, right? Four three O, yeah? Four thirty. As per usual, it's been a pleasure to have your company. Please make sure you smash that like, hit subscribe if you're listening via or watching via YouTube. If you're listening via the podcast app, of course, five star review, uh, download the show and share it. And of course, support via Patreon is always more than welcome. Patreon.com for us Agostino. Patreon.com for us A G O S T I N H O. That will be where I am and located. Until next time, my friends, see you very, very soon. Take care and be safe.